Right here live on NBTV, folks, we're standing next to none other than Queen Mother Roberta McLeod. She's going to give us her rendition on what the March on Washington was like 50 years ago. Well, I was just accepted to Hampton. I was 18. My grandmother was really upset about the whole idea of me going to the march. So she asked her friend, Miss Eva, to take me because I wasn't going to go on my own and she wasn't having it. And because she was afraid of something would happen. But I was fortunate enough to get there. And I can remember the spot I stood in. I remember the feeling there. But every march after that, I participated in it. And some students were asking me, what did I remember most? I remember when Mahalia Jackson started singing. She was the singer. And Martin Luther King wasn't near there yet. And you know, they kept talking about the fact that there were no women up there. But I want history to be corrected because there was a woman always there. And that was Dr. Dorothy Height. Because she was the glue that kept those brothers from taking each other apart when they didn't agree. Here we are, August 25th. The commemoration, of course, to the 50th anniversary took place August 24, 2013. Let me ask you something. Have we made any progress, of course, 50 years later, in your opinion? I think we've made progress, but like I tell my students, when I worked at Queens College, I had a dear friend, Rabbi Kraft, and one day I asked him, why are we always talking about the Jewish Holocaust? It was so horrific. Why do we keep talking of it? And he said to me, and I always tell my students this, he said, one thing that your people can learn from my people, lest we forget history, it will repeat itself. And 50 years now today, on these grounds of Howard University, we had the Black Power Movement started right here. Stokely Carmichael was a student. We had students involved in uh, Brown versus the Board of Education with Thurgood Marshall at our law school with Charles Houston and Attorney uh, Hill. But today, a lot of people don't even know their history. Schools are erasing African-American history from the school books. They don't even talk about it. I want to give our dear brother right here, none other than Dr. Reverend Frederick, of course, Haynes III, an opportunity to give us his rendition and his experiences from the march yesterday. And more importantly, give us a little excerpt on the ideals and philosophies that you have for us today to move forward. Well, first of all, uh, to hear uh, the Queen Mother uh, share reminds me afresh of how dangerous it was back then and so what happened in 63 in a real sense was revolutionary and so if yesterday is to have meaning as it did 50 years ago there must be something revolutionary that comes out of it a spirit of revolution that says we're going to stand to ensure that the voting rights act that was written in blood is not gutted if we don't do that then yesterday was just a picnic as opposed to a revolutionary movement and gathering and so it's very important that we not focus just on yesterday but that yesterday propel us into a movement that's going to make a difference what what they did 50 years ago was absolutely amazing. We're not here today if they didn't do what they did 50 years ago, but it didn't stop with 50 years ago. They kept going, they kept marching, they kept agitating, and they kept fighting. And that's what we have to do now. Trayvon Martin says we have to fight. Oscar Grant says we have to fight. Troy Davis says we have to fight. We have to continue to fight in the name of those who've given their lives. This is one of our great leaders of today in the 21st century, folks. I'm standing next to none other than the Reverend Dr. Frederick Haynes III. Is there any parting shots or closing remarks that you would like to let NBTV land know as relates to what we must do 50 late years later? Well, first of all, we thank Queen Mother Roberta McLeod and those who paved the way. We thank them because, again, if they had not done that, we wouldn't be where we are. We are standing symbolically on their shoulders. The question is, are we going to be worthy of standing on their shoulders? We're worthy of standing on their shoulders when we again fight to end profiling however it shows up. We fight for our voting rights and we do all we can to engage in an activism that is not content with just electing a president to the White House, but making sure that all of our homes have access to equality of opportunity in terms of education, economics, and the like. All of that is a part of our ongoing struggle. If we don't do that, we're not worthy of what they did 50 years ago. 
There it is, folks, right here live on TV. We have none other than Queen Roberta, of course, McLeod, and the great modern-day minister that we have in our midst, Reverend Dr. Frederick Haynes III. Stay tuned right here at NBTV. TV production. Why? Because we care.